Hello indie game fans, there are a multitude of online events in June in the absence of E3 this year, so let me be your guide to the best new indie game trailers and announcements from these. This episode focused on the Japanese-centric Indie Live Expo, beginning with the announcement of Record of Ludos War Delit in Wonder Labyrinth Early Access Stage 2. This Metroidvania title based on the classic anime series released on Steam in March to great success, and a couple of months in, Stage 2 of the Early Access is set to be released sometime this month. As you guys know, I'm a huge fan of this developer, primarily due to the pixel art, but this one is really very Symphony of the Night in nature, and the update trailer shows off more enemies, a new boss fight, and more. Very excited for the full release of this, since I do think that it's a little strange for a Metroidvania title to be in early access, but if you're playing this as and when the updates come out, be sure to check in on this. Perhaps on paper, the most exciting announcement from the event, Kojin Sword of Rewind is an action platformer in the vein of Azure Striker Gunboat with an anime aesthetic, fast action and stylish combat. Battle robotic foes while managing the time rewind mechanics with a fun looking projectile deflection ability as well. There's a talking sword, so it could have an interesting story to tell, though I'm curious about the progression or RPG mechanics if there are any. One of the pleasant surprises during the show was the very cute Derpy Konga. This is a puzzle platformer where you need to gather your friends or thumb style, holding hands, traversing through the environment and solving puzzles. A little bit of Pikmin and a little bit of Overlord, I do resonate with the concept of this and of course, with a larger group or chain of friends, the more difficult it will be to control. Still relatively early and bare bones in presentation, so we'll see how development progresses on this. Another exciting update announcement is Gensokyo Night Festival Stage 2 update. Similar to Delit in Wonder Labyrinth above, this is a mesmerizing Metroidvania title, although this one has more overt Toho influences. Again, it looks awesome and tremendously well received so far, so another no-brainer title if you love Metroidvanias. This is not a new trailer, but RPG Time The Legend of Wright is a wonderful hand-drawn RPG that has an art style as if it were the doodles of a child bored at school. I love the pencil lines on screen combined with the various toys and trinkets all around the table, really imparting that sense of childlike wonder. Little bits of Paper Mario influence in this as well, and there are leveling, stats, equipment, and so on, so it is a true RPG experience. Looks like there are a number of different game mechanics, from turn-based RPG combat, a light gun section, and even point-and-click adventure, so it is very charming indeed and should be out sometime this year. Developer Salary Emblem is best known for the Baobab's Mausoleum series, and Mesmeratu is the next title, which is a rope-light platformer hell with, shall we say, a very strange and unique art direction. Ah! 
It mixes 2D pixel art with 3D, with some horrific designs of organs on the outside, monsters, bulging eyeballs, rain, water effects, and so on. The description cites Alex Kidd, Cowan Chicken, and Dungwell as inspirations, but if you do love weird, cool indie games, this is one to keep an eye on. If you love mecha action, Nimbus Infinity is one to look forward to. All systems engaged. Battlefront ready for combat. If you don't know, my favourite weather is rain, since there's something peaceful, calming and cosy about it, so of course, rainy season got my attention. This is about an ordinary family spending time at home together during the rain, which just seems pleasant. If you loved weathering with you, this might be of interest, and interestingly enough, it is a humble original title, so it looks like they are expanding out. And now a special message from Toby Fox. うそです。しょっちゅう聞いてます。まあ、それは置いといて、今日はとってもいいものをお届けに参りました。インディーゲームクリエイターの皆さんにトビファックスから いつもたまたま僕が顔の前を横切って、なんとかなってますけど、生配信だとその行かないじゃないですか。そんなわけで早速メッセージを読んでみたいと思います。皆さん、こんにちは。トビフォックスです。このところ世界中の国が大変な状
プレイヤーに感じてもらえるところだからプレイヤーの心とクリエイターの心が通じ合うチャンスも大きくなるんですプレイヤーとクリエイターの心が通じ合うと不思議なことが起こりますゲーム画面が呪いの鏡みたいに点滅してプレイヤーの心も光り始めて鏡と共鳴するように点滅してそうなったらプレイヤーはもうそのゲームと出会う前の自分には戻れないあなたが作ったゲームから信じられないほど大きな希望を受け取ったりするんですそれがインディーゲームの力だって僕が自分で経験したことですから僕の心もインディーゲームをプレイして輝いたことがあります洞窟物語とか夢日記とかそしてもちろんズンさんの東方プロジェクトとかそう帽子をかぶった構成的な女子たちや綺麗に並んだダマクや日本ならではのエネルジェリックビエンに触れて僕の心が輝きました聖なる光に飛び込んで僕の体も進化を遂げたそして僕はゲームデザイナーというモンスターになったんです僕は自分のゲームをプレイしてくれた人にも同じ呪いをかけたいそうやってみんなを笑顔にできたらいいなと脱線しました要するに僕が言いたいのはゲームを作れば誰かに希望を与えたり僕みたいなとんでもないモンスターに生まれ変わらせたりできるよってことどんな状況であろうとそれって素晴らしいことだと思いますだから世界中が大変な時でもみんな諦めないで世界が闇に包まれてるなら自分が輝けばいいゲームクリエイターもプレイヤーもみんな一緒に頑張ろうご視聴ありがとうございましたあでも頑張りすぎは禁止ですよ人間には限界というものがありますねみんな人間ですからね少なくとも今この配信を見てくれてる皆さんの大半はそうでしょう違うのはこの犬ぐらいですねえどういうこと僕人間じゃないの待って待って待って待って待ってあれもう終わりだえっとそういうことなんで頑張りましょうね This is the 16,000th century, a colorful era of peace known for its progress in both arts and science. Well, it was until five minutes ago. What happened to everything? To everyone? Long story! Reggie, his cousin, two scientists, and most likely the end of the world. It's an adorable platformer starring a gravity defying tomato, which looks bonkers and probably has too long of a name. Reggie, you have to go back in time. Travel back in time to recruit Isaac Newton to save the world with such a wonderful, hand drawn art style and fun looking platforming. Sure, he does his job. The focus seems to be on time trials as you make your way through the levels as quickly as possible, but watch out for the multitude of enemies, traps, and hazards. Science keeps disappearing. We have to find the cause before everything is gone. We are at a dead end. You need to travel further back where no man has been before. But sometimes back is not enough. 
parallel dimensions. Black holes. The introduction of the cousin character looks like it could be neat in the platforming, although I'm not sure if it is co-op or just a new mechanic. This is going to be harder than we thought. Nothing will ever be the same. It does look fantastic, though as with all platformers, the tightness of the controls will determine how good it is. We screwed the future again! Darn! The developer of this did reach out to me a little while back, but since Reverse Collapse, codenamed Bakery, did feature during the event, why not show it off right now? This is an anime turn-based tactics game set during something known as the Second Code. Military conflicts emerged from this post-apocalyptic scenario where you play as an operative caught up in the middle of this all very agent-styled tactics game which I love the look of. Such Art is a painting simulator that allows you to be Bob Ross in your own studio, put your piece up for display and sale, and to open up your gallery for all to see. While games like Paspato, The Starving Artist, and Art School have come before it, this one is in first person, and as such, you do seem to have a wider array of instruments and tools to use. On top of paintbrushes or spray cans, you have rollers, stamps, snow globes, flamethrowers, and more. As such, be free to express your creativity in this, which is something that I appreciate in games. Sumire no Sora is a narrative adventure game with a beautiful hand-drawn art style which I want to know more about. The shooter map is another favourite of mine, so Super Glitter Rush instantly sold me due to the music, colours and feel of this game. It looks fast and frantic, with its share of bullet hell action, and is a boss rush focus title with 30 plus to encounter, with the main mechanic being to deflect enemy bullets back at them. I'm a little bit concerned since this is announced for both PC and mobile devices, but a good game is a good game regardless of platform, so hopefully this pans out well. If you enjoyed the simple action-adventure game Kamiko, developer Skipmore is working on Transy Ruby which also has a similar art style but is an action platformer instead. I do like the look of this with the chibi main character and some clean pixel art backgrounds, but there is platforming, combat, collectibles and boss fights so it should be a good one. If you love pixel art metroidvanias, then listen up. Huck is one such game which is so impressively beautiful in terms of the detail on the character, enemies, and environments. The action looks super slick with a suitably moody world to explore, having hints of some sort of post-apocalypse with both robotic and mutant enemies to encounter. As always, save the best for last, 
taking the number one spot. To see more of the big picture, check out these awesome videos and I will see you after the jump.